everyone. Uh, we're just going to get straight into it. I haven't really set up because this has all basically been stuff that I've learned in a very short period of time. Uh, shout out to Alienware for sponsoring this video. Um, <laughs> shout out okay. to Alienware for sponsoring this video. Honestly, get your bag, baby. Get your bag. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking, taking a look at the CLG sold mass layoffs brand's future uncertain. I have spoken to several different people over the past couple of hours, and what has materialized is the information uh, that CLG employees were informed earlier today that starting on this Thursday, City Guys, I can't make it louder. It's just a fucking low volume video. Even Greg Kim, who was running the organization, will be let go from the organization and the company other than the League of Legends vertical. The League of Legends vertical seemingly is headed towards NRG. I, it's unclear to me the exact details, but I've just been told that NRG will have some sort of uh, involvement with the League of Legends team may be an acquisition, and then once they can change the name over to NRG, that's what it'll be. Uh, but it appears as though CLG will likely not continue to exist as a brand or an org uh, because MSG, Madison Square Garden, who owns CLG, will uh, or has seemingly sold off the League of Legends vertical or perhaps the organization. Again, the de exact details of the business situation are not completely clear to the staff members who were informed of this, uh, but this seems to be what I have pieced together over the course of talking to different people. Uh, I've reached out to both CLG and MSG and was not able to get a statement at the time of this uh, and have not been able to reach out to NRG at this time, though I plan to as the story develops. Uh, but that is what's going on. Uh, obviously, there's a lot that people are going to react to. You know, they're going to talk about esports. They're going to talk about. I think the crazy thing I'm whispering because some of you guys are using the the extension. Uh, the craziest thing is that uh, some like this is mid season. This is mid season. That is crazy. That is crazy. CLG and the legacy, I think the most important thing to consider during all of that is that a lot of people just lost their jobs. They lost it on very short notice. And that those people now, what, what is perhaps interesting for us to talk about or interesting for us to be sad about as fans, um, the thing that is most relevant is just the amount of people that are out of work now. Um, and so really please keep an eye out if you are in a position to hire capable people uh, it seems like CLG was really doing a lot of cool stuff in the last couple of years and really just starting to Bud Light around. Ace. I think my perception of them has changed a lot from even just a year or two ago. Um, and I think it's important to think of those people as we talk about uh, what all of this means in the broader context. Now, that being said, this is wild. I mean, on the heels of the TSM stuff that came out last week, uh, we also now have the CLG news. And it's a bit of a heartbreaker. I mean, CLG was really the first organization that I remember covering in a significant way. Uh, and I was excited for them as they got acquired by MSG. We really thought that this was going to move in the organization to an exciting um, direction. And obviously, things did not pan out the way that it did or that a lot of people expected it to or hoped it would. And now we are in the situation where the future of the brand and the org is uncertain. Um, I think that there might be some attempts to recover the brand. I don't know. And it's unclear again at this time if MSG still owns the IP of CLG. They can just make a CLG or NFT. MSG seemingly will with whatever is going on with them now. Um, and what happens if NRG decides to just rebrand the league team over to CLG, or sorry, from CLG to NRG? And then again, what happens to everything else? Uh, so those details are still developing. I'm sorry that I don't have more information for you, quite honestly. It was a very short time ago that the members or the staff members of CLG were informed of all this stuff. And I've spent the time just trying to get this information going um, so that people can start talking about it. And so that as 
You know, the members of the staff start announcing what's happening. Um, people can try to assist them in whatever way they can. Uh, we'll be talking about this on Hotline League tonight, um, as well as the TSM news. It's not fun news. Um, it's very interesting. I will say the energy stuff really surprises me because I'd heard from a couple people that they were in an interesting financial state not too long ago. So, you know, I don't want to speculate too much, but I don't know if this means that there's another buyer that came in on energy or whatever, but I do think that the story might be a little bit bigger than just energy acquiring the league spot, but we'll Mr. see how Beast. things develop. Perhaps existing investors decided to um, invest further given the opportunity to acquire Mr. This spot. F. So again, there's a lot we don't know yet, but I wanted to get this video out there because the stuff is going to start hitting here and just a little bit. Uh, if you are somebody who has additional information on this, uh, feel free to share it with me. I am um, capable of being respectful of people not wanting to uh, to get in trouble with anyone. So uh, feel free to uh, reach out if you do. Again, we'll be taking calls about this on Hotline Leaks tonight so we can hear from all of you about it. And again, heart goes out to everybody uh, who are impacted by the layoffs. And I guess we're going to see what happens with CLG, the league team, and everything else over the next couple uh, months. But expect expect news, I believe, uh, sometime around later later this week uh, would be my guess. Anyway, thank you all. Uh, uh, my take on this, okay? Um, like, T TSM and CLG are two orgs that I watched uh, since. Like, I watched them. I looked up to the players. I played against them even. Like, TSM and CUG, their legacy in League of Legends is legendary. And they played a huge part in the success of League of Legends in terms of the popularity through the streams on own.tv. And, uh, of course, you know, the rivalry between the TSM and the CUG, you know, all of that was so interesting. And they had some infectious personalities on there that really, really had a dream about what esports could be and what it can be, right? They created CLG as an organization, TSM as an organization. I think that they were a big part of, you know, selling the idea of making the LCS and making the LEC, right? Um, with Without these teams, the caveat is, though, is that you can't hold on to legacy and be that your have that be your main selling point teams need to adapt teams need to overcome teams need to change especially in a scene that is filled with low hanging fruit in terms of what improvements you can make just because cog and tsm are out I don't think that spells doom. I would be more worried if you have like the top G's. I shouldn't say top G's. Uh, top dogs in their respective regions be the teams that um, falter. Like if Cloud9 came out and said, yo, yo, we just won two splits, but this is financially unviable. Then I'd be like, holy fuck. Then I'd be like, whoa, that would be scary. But if G2 came out and said, yo, G2, we, we, we don't think this is financially viable to be in the LEC or like Fnatic, you know, that would be like, damn. But TS TSM and CLG haven't been the same for many years. I don't think we should paint the picture that CLG and TSM are currently the top dogs, you know, I just don't think they are. And to, to if they're in a situation, right, it's like TSM got fucked over by the FTX. I don't know the details. CUG, I don't know. I, 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 CUG hasn't been on my radar for I don't know how long. And this comes from a person that really has great memories of watching CUG and TSM. But it's like, I think it's fine for some things to change and some things to be phased out. And if downsizing needs to happen, then it needs to happen. But are they not big brands? Mm, are they in the context of everything else? FaZe is a big brand, right? And that went to shit it's like being a big brand is not enough i think most of the time in esports people care more about players than teams there are some legacy fans out there that care about that are fans of Fnatic, 
they're fans of TSM, fans of CLG. There's definitely people out there that are like that. The, the more traditional sports fan, right? That buy every jersey, that represent the colors. And I feel bad for those guys, for sure. But looking at the context of the LEC, I mean LCS, you... A, a lot of the old school TSM fans are just fans of 100 Thieves because of Bjergsen, because of Double Lip. It's like people are fans of, of FlyQuest because of Prince and the moves that they are making and they were exciting to watch. And people want to watch, uh, of course, uh, C9 because they're winning and uh, the play is there, right? So I, I think I think it's fine. I wouldn't be surprised that a lot of the current viewership in LoL Esports don't give a shit about Season 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So I think I think all of these changes that are occurring in the space in terms of what money comes in and what, what's going on, I think that's something that needs to happen. And I think that change will be positive in the long run. So I'm not scared. You know, I'm not scared.